quilters and would-be quilters. Happy to be with you again today to continue our lessons. We're going to connect with what we practiced in the first lesson. In case you missed that, be sure to go back and practice that because it's quite essential to be able to continue and enjoy what we're going to be doing. And I'm going to be showing you how to do that first stitch with certain tools. And so for this reason, we do need to talk about a few tools. I've always made small stitches, and that has a history. I grew up being taught that quilt stitches really need to be little, fine. And there's a reason to that. It makes the quilt durable. You, d you just don't wear a quilt out that's quilted with fine stitches close to uh, and with, without a lot of space between the quilting. I've seen a lot of old quilts that were very ragged, but it wasn't the quilting that was being disintegrated. It was the material, the fabric. So yeah, using small stitches has a lot to do with the durability of the quilt. And for me, it has a lot to do with bringing out the pattern of what I'm quilting too. Big stitches tend to be just not nearly as, uh, as visible when it comes to seeing the pattern as it is when you have small stitches. Because really, your thread is not going to play, the color of your thread doesn't really matter when you have small stitches because it's not the thread you see. It's the profile of what you're quilting into it. So we do need to talk about tools because quilting with small stitches puts a lot of pressure on the needle and it, you're not going to be able to put more than one stitch onto a needle and be able to pull it out yet if you're making small stitches. So we're using tools to protect your hands and to make this possible. The first tool I want to show you is this thimble. It is shaped just like my finger, which allows me to use the finger the way it's formed. Whether I use this part or this part, whichever position seems to fit in the direction that I'm quilting. That's important to me. I don't have to always either just quilt from the tip or from the side. And I prefer the rounded part. It relaxes my hand and that protects me from any kind of injury too, considering a carpal tunnel, which is a situation that I've <laughs> experienced. And with this tool, this enables me to protect my finger, to catch up each stitch so that it's not pricked with every stitch. The needle slides across this edge. And it allows me also to quilt even more evenly. And this is a tool that the idea is not for me. A lot of people have had the idea to put something underneath the quilt, but we have modif I have modified this tool so that it has the right angles that I prefer and help me to quilt, whether it's from the, this side, from this side. I can move it around with my finger. My hand is in an upright position so that it is always relaxed. Now, most of you are not going to have these tools. So you don't have to have this kind of a thimble to quilt like this. You don't have to have this kind of a tool either. You can also quilt with a different thimble. This technique will, will work. If you don't have a tool like this, try looking in your drawer, silverware drawer, and finding a spoon that you hold in your hand like this, which will then allow you to use this edge similar to this Oops. to this porcelain thimble that I have here. It's porcelain with a very hard glaze. The disadvantage of a spoon is that it will make that will dull your needle quite soon, but it's definitely an advantage to try out, see if you like this method without having to buy a tool. Now if you'd be in my class, I would you would have the privilege of trying these two tools out for two days 
and still deciding whether you want to keep them and use them or not. But being so that that's not possible, I'm trying to find alternatives to help you. Now, in case you have a problem with thimbles, and I know a lot of people do, especially if they've had trouble with swollen knuckles where a thimble just will not fit, there is one other alternative that works fairly well, and that is a, a tape that you can only get at the veterinarians that is often wrapped around a wounded paw of an animal that they can't bite into. And it's very flexible, and you can wrap it around a finger as often as you need to, and it works quite well to protect your finger. So in case you really cannot find a thimble that fits on your finger, try that out. It works. Let's get started. The point is to guide my needle so that it hits the edge of this needle slide just below the, t the top edge. Tip the needle back so it slides over the top and then stop and pull the slide out in front of the needle again. So I'll be showing you this. Hope you can follow by looking. Can you see, if you can see the edge here, I'm moving it back and forth so that you can follow that. I pick up the needle, like demonstrated the first time. Always be sure you have that firm grip on your needle for the first stitch. The first stitch is the most important one. Always is. So you see this edge? I put the needle into the material. I feel the resistance. And now I can take my fingers away and the needle is clamped between these two tools. I slowly put the needle down, rock it down a little bit, until I s and push until I see the needle point coming out on the other side. I will repeat this procedure. You see this needle slide. I pick up the needle, have it firmly in my grip, Put the needle into the quilt until I feel the resistance from the needle slide. Take my fingers away, my finger and my thumb away. Tip the needle down so that I can push it over the top of the slide. Soon as I see that tip, I stop. But I do not relieve the tension. If I relieve the tension, I'm going to lose my stitch. So I Keeping the tension, I move the needle slide forward until I see it in front of the tip of the needle, picking the needle up again until I feel that resistance. And then I rock it back down just a little bit so it slides over the top. As soon as I see the tip, I stop and I repeat this. procedure. I now have four stitches on here, which is enough for this quilt because it's rather thick. And I could never pull that needle out with my fingers. So I have a little tool that's very helpful. I put the needle through the bigger hole be sure the needle is, is visible on this side of the hole. I clamp it shut with this plunger that I have in my thumb and pull the needle out. It's a very, very good tool to have and it certainly saves on a lot of frustration and strength. Now you probably noticed that this needle is really small, short but strong. For this kind of quilting, you need a short, strong needle. Otherwise it will bend and really, you can't get more than about four, sometimes five stitches onto a needle like this and still be able to pull it out. If it's longer, it's just clumsier and it doesn't help in being able to quilt better. So I prefer a short, sturdy needle 
There's lots of needles on the market. I've tried a lot of different ones. And my favorite one now is the 11 betweens. Be sure you use betweens. They're made for quilting. This is a size 11 from Roxanne's. It is usually quilt the needles, the higher the number of the needle, the smaller the needle is. Very often you have a 10 and then you have a 12. Roxanne has made an 11, which is between the two. The 11 is as strong as the 10, but short like the 12. And it's just the right needle for me. Pick the needle that you want to what works the best for you, but choosing a needle is not unimportant. The reason this first stitch is so important is because when you start quilting, that first stitch will help you gauge for the rest of the stitches. You will see on your needle the right size of the stitch that you want. And after that, if the first stitch is the right thing, then the rest is just comparing and making them at the same length. And it's so much easier to compare them with each other than it is to make that very first stitch. Okay, that's it for today. We were working on the first position and how to hold the needle and how to guide it. For the next lesson, we'll be going into a different direction, the second direction. Hope you'll join us. If you've missed any of the first instructions, go back and practice. All the things that have been shown to you, it will help you be able to proceed further. Thank you for all the good comments you've sent. We really appreciate your being a part of this program. And uh, for all of you who are new, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button so that you will be informed when the next video is going to be shown. And we're looking forward to seeing you again. And remember, quilting connects much more than three layers of fabric.